Hello boys and girls, this is Frank Aness from BlenderContest.com. In case you don't know, we run monthly themed competitions where you can win prizes by turning in your artwork. Um, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a really simple vase. Um, it's, it's something that I usually add to most of my architectural designs, um, mostly because I think it adds a little bit of uh, credibility. It makes it look a little bit more real, like someone actually is going to use that. Uh, to show you an example, um, for example, this is something I was making for uh, for one of the short movies I'm helping with. Uh, and you can imagine how bland and boring this would look without, you know, some color. Um, and, and it adds more than just color. You can see it adds some reflection and it lets the light go in in colors. And, you know, it adds a little bit of a wow factor, even though glass is not really that hard to do with cycles. Um, I don't know, it looks cool, okay? Uh, and I think with it, this is, this is a really kind of like in for beginner tutorial uh and i think you're gonna learn a lot of like the basic things that you usually do uh on blender uh with this simple vase um so let's go right into it um the first thing we're gonna do we're gonna start with you know the default cube this is what as soon as you open blender this is what you're gonna see hopefully you have seen it before this is not your first time it is if it is your first time please go into go to blender.org and watch some of those getting started tutorials um even though i'm gonna try to go as basic as possible that would probably help you a lot not to get lost and frustrated um all right so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move that cube up if you can see it's kind of like divided right there in, in the middle of the grid what you would be the imaginary floor so we're gonna hit g um and z to to lock it on the z axis and hit one on your numpad and you can see hit enter and you can see it's right there right now it's like exactly above that line now we're going to go into edit mode um just a little bit of background here on edit mode you can actually move vertices uh around on object mode you as you know as you can imagine you can only move or edit the object itself itself as a whole okay so we're gonna go into edit mode and edit mode you have two ways to do it you can go down here where you see object mode and just select edit mode right or you can just hit your tab key tab as you can see here on the screencast um, and then you can see you have all your vertices selected you have one two three four blah 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 a lot of vertices uh, uh, eight if you look up here it tells you how many vertices you have selected but what we really want to do is that we want to select that face uh, and, and a face is it's a collection of vertices right it's like what you have in between the vertices if you if you in order to go into face mode you have to click um, control tab and then this little mesh select mode menu comes out you hit on face and then you can see that instead of selecting vertices you have the option to uh, right click on the faces so you're gonna select the one on top uh, the top vertice um, and then I want to um, kind of stretch this on the z-axis I want it to make it longer so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit G G is for grab uh, that's what you know what we're gonna do we're gonna grab it and move it up so we're gonna hit G we're gonna hit Z as in Z and then we're gonna hit 1.5 and that's gonna move it one and a half times the the of the position that it is right now right so if if you can imagine if he had one unit now it's gonna be two and a half units long okay hopefully my math is is that accurate uh, I mean it's quite simple I hope so all right, so now you're gonna have this that it's a, a little longer and now what I want it's a vase So, you know, you can imagine you want to pour water in it You want to put some flowers in it. So you need a hole on top so you can do this So we're gonna hit X and we're gonna delete that face Okay, you have the option to delete different things vertices edges all that stuff You want to delete the face and you can see now you have a hole in there now you can put things in there I mean, it's it would be a really basic vase but you could probably sell it i've seen a lot of stuff out there um next thing we want to do is that we want to um subdivide this in order to, that we can control it more if you look at it right now there's not a lot you can do to it even if you go back into vertex mode and, and you, you start moving things around i mean i guess you could make like a half triangle thing it's not going to work right so what you want to do um is is go back into vertex mode that i just did because you know i go ahead too fast but you hit control tab again and you go back into vertex modes so you can see all the vertices again and you can select 
any of these vertices, right? Um, so what I want to do is that I want to add more vertices to it so it's easier to manage and to move things around. So you want to hit Control R and you see if you move it around, depending on the edge that you're hovering over with your mouse, uh, you see that pink line. I hope you can see it on the, on the video. Um, so that's where that loop cuts gonna it's gonna be so i want them on on both sides so i'm just gonna hit it here you hit it and if you don't if you keep on moving your mouse you see it keeps on moving and you would you'll be able to put it whatever you want but i want it to be in the middle so i'm just gonna hit the escape key and that's it it's right in the middle but i want another one on this other sides so i'm gonna hit Control r again um hit escape again well sorry Control r left mouse button and then escape um and then you're gonna see that on the top before i had four vertices now if i select all of them uh now you can see that i have eight vertices now it's a lot easier to move okay now now i have more options uh to to work on this um and uh if if it's hard to explain without you seeing what's going to happen, but believe me for a second, I'm, I'll point it out later when we get there. Um, we need to add another loop cut to the bottom because once we add a subsurf modifier, this is going to get a little too round and, you know, you actually need a flat surface on the bottom for it to stand on. So we're going to hit another control R um, and we're going to add another loop cut, but this time we're gonna not gonna hit escape. We're actually gonna move it. To, we're gonna slide it to the bottom, and then when it's almost there at the bottom, uh, we're gonna hit on the left mouse button, and then you're gonna see that it's right there at the bottom. Okay. All right. So, so far so good. I hope. Um, now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna give it a little bit of a shape. Okay. Um, this is something you're gonna do a lot when you wanna select everything on the loop. You have a lot of options, okay? Um, let me hit A to deselect everything, make sure there's nothing selected. Um, and and uh, you could hit um, hold the control key and just make a little like lasso there and you could select all of those top vertices. Um, or you could go select one, hold shift and keep you know selecting vertices around what i want it's only the you could do both box selecting you could do a lot of things okay but uh, what i want to do is to use the shift i want to select only the new vertices we added right so you hit shift and right mouse button and then you can select those four and what i'm going to do is that i'm going to scale those in all right so you're going to hit s for scale and then just kind of like move it with your mouse, move it in. You see that dotted line? So just move it in. Um, I go, I don't know, something like that. You, you can change it later. If you, if you went too far in or too far out or whatever, you, you can still change it later. I'm just, I'm just gonna go around there, okay? Um, and then uh, what I want to do is to twist the top a little bit just to make it more interesting. Um, I don't know why I like it that way, but I do. Um, and now you do it now you do like it like that too so i'm just gonna select all of them uh another way to select all the vertices on a loop cut uh or, or on a loop or an edge loop i guess i should say um you can hit alt the alt key hold it and then right click on on one of those edges and it will select every vertice on that edge loop okay um and then what i want is to rotate it so i'm gonna hit r for rotate z and then I'm gonna go for 45 degrees, okay? And now you can see that it has some kind of like curve there. Um, right now you may be thinking, well, there's there's no way you can actually put some flowers in there. I'm gonna show you after we add the modify the modifiers, it's gonna look a little different, okay? Um, and again, if if you ever feel like it's not, you know, the opening is not big enough, let's go back and you can just reselect those inner vertices and just you know scale it back up a little bit whatever you want it, it's and you can still change it later okay i'm oh, sorry I, you know just in case um so you rotate it 45 degrees degrees in the z axis hit enter and that's it right and you can look at it it, it looks okay i guess right um so so now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna add another loop cut um in the middle so control r 
add it there in the middle. Oops, sorry. Then hit escape. So it stays right there in the middle. And what I like to do is that I like to scale it in just to give it shape, like a little hourglass shape kind of thing. Um, I'm going to go a little bit further in. See, it, it's this is all, you know, it's all depending on taste and design and, and feel free to do whatever you want with it. I, I just want you to know the basics on how to create something like this, okay? Um... All right, so now that we have that loop cut, what I want is to start adding some modifiers to it, okay? Um, <clears throat> so the modifiers, if you have never seen them, uh, you have a lot of options. There are a lot of options you can do with the modifiers. I'm only gonna show you maybe two or three um, to make this little vase. Um, the first one I, I, I you need to do, uh, and yes, the, the ha in the order that you add the modifiers, it affects uh, your design. So the first one I'm going to add is um, it's a solidify modifier. Okay. Uh, the modifiers menu is right here where you see the wrench. So you hit on that wrench. Um, let's get out of, sorry, let's get, get out of edit mode. Let's go to, into object mode. All right. You can hit tab or you can just click down there and go into edit mode. And I want to add a solidify modifier. You look here in the little menu, look for solidify. And then what this is going to do is that it's just going to make it thicker. That's that's pretty much what we want to do. Okay, make it thicker. Uh, so we're going to get the we're going to we're going to get here, right here where it says thickness. Uh, I guess if we open this a little bigger, it says thickness. Um, and we're just going to you can you can either slide it holding the left mouse button. You can see that it starts getting a little thicker uh, or you can just click once on it and then add whatever value you want to add to it, okay? Um, I think that value that ended up right there is pretty much fine. I'm gonna go for 0.15. Um, you can change it. You don't You don't have to get married to it. Uh, there's there's some other things you can do that it's, it would make it a little bit more um, precise, let's say, but um, I'm not gonna show you those right now because I think you have enough to learn with this one. Uh, so that's that's it. You're going to leave it there. And then what we want to add is a subsurf modifier. And the subsurf modifier, it's probably one of the modifiers you're going to use the most. The subsurf and the mirror are probably the ones that you're going to use the most. Um, so there, there's two ways to get to it. One would be exactly how we did with the solidify. You can go into the modifier list, look for a subdivision surface. That's a subsurf. Um, or you can hit control and then you can hit one, two, three, four, five. And that depends on the levels of subsurf that you're going to add to it. Uh, just, just to explain it, I'm going to hit control two. Um, and you can see that it just kind of uh, um, made it a little bit more organic, right? Now, n theoretically, there's another vertice in between each vertice you had per level of subsurf. Uh, the point is that it makes it a lot more, I don't know, smooth let's say um and uh this is this is what i why i ask you to add the solidify first because if you move it on the bottom it's it's a different effect but then you can you can see that there's still there's you start to get some like weird things happening uh so the solidify has to be on top yes you can move them uh up or down with this little arrows you have here okay uh and we're gonna have the subsurf at two okay um, and there you can see you have you have something that's already resembling a vase, I would say. Uh, you know, depending on how you like your vases, I guess. Um, but anyways, what we're going to do now is that you can still see the the vertices. You can see, see all those faces. You have a lot of little rectangles around. So in, to get rid of them, you can hit, you can click T. And then you have this, uh, the object tools. In the object tools, you can find shading. And shading, you hit smooth. And look at that. Now it looks all smooth and pretty. Huh? Don't you like that? All right. So that was, that was really simple, I hope. Um, so basically, you now have a vase. Um, you can make it. You can change whatever you want on it, right? Um, let's, let's go back into edit mode to make an example. It's... You could select, again, Alt, um, A to deselect everything, Alt, and uh, hold Alt and, and right-click on that edge. And let's say you can you could get grab this arrow and just, like, make it longer, or you could make it shorter, or you could, um, you could scale it. You could hit S and just scale it bigger and just looks completely different. Um, 
I'm just going to leave it pretty much how it was, because, I don't know, because I like it, okay? But just to give you an idea, as soon as you're going back into edit mode, you can change whatever you want, okay? And you can make your own designs, and you can make your own bases. Um, the principles are going to be exactly the same. Going back into object mode, I'm going to get rid of that window because it bothers me. I'm going to hit tab to get rid of it. Now we're going to like this, okay? Um, <clears throat> sorry, in order to like it, I mean to, to light it, uh, Blender has two engines uh, for rendering. It has the Blender render engine, and it has Cycles. Cycles was something that was added maybe a year ago. Um, that is, it's a lot simpler, and it gives you really really realistic results for things like what we're doing right now. There's still a lot of stuff that you can do in, on the internal render that is amazing and it's really good and there's a lot of people out there that are way better with it than I am. Um, I use cycles 90% of the time, 95% of the time I use cycles, okay? So you can select cycles right here, the cycles render from, uh, from that little menu. Uh, and now you can actually render things uh, pretty much real time. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that just yet. Um, but what I'm gonna show you is how I usually light scenes. Um, let's start with the most basic thing. I'm gonna hit one on the num on the numpad, and then I'm gonna hit five to go into this perspective view. Um, and then make sure your cursor is still here in the center. If it's not, you can hit uh, Shift S. Um, and go here and, you know, select cursor to center, just in case. Sometimes you're moving things around, and it moves over there, and it's like, oh, then, then you start adding things, and they're all, all out of whack. So you go back into the center right there. And then I want to add um, a plane. We're going to use this plane, oh, sorry, um, Shift-A, Mesh, Plane. And we're going to use, I'm going to use that plane as a lamp, okay? Um, what, what I want to do is just... Uh, scale that plane I'm gonna go probably for um, you hit S I'm gonna go probably by seven or something like that um, it's kind of big but that way I find that you can assign less power to it but it's it's more of a of an overall light instead of like a spot uh, um, I mean yes we have spotlights but we're not going there yet okay so I'm gonna hit scale seven enter and then I want to rotate it. Um, let's start rotating it on the y-axis. Uh, yes, on the sorry, the x-axis. So R X. And let's go 90. Oh, sorry, on the y-axis. My mistake. Y-axis. 90. So let's go back just in case because I screwed up. Rotate Y 90 on the numpad. Boom. All right. Now I'm gonna zoom out a little bit with the with the mouse scroll. I'm gonna hit G. I'm just gonna move it. I'm gonna say about there maybe. Um, and then I'm gonna make a copy of it. I'm gonna hit Shift D. Uh, as you and then click on either Enter or your left mouse button, uh, and you can just grab it by the arrow and move it. You you can't really see it unless you have it selected. You, like the other one's still here if you move around you can still see it it's it's one of those things if you're in perspective mode you can see it if you're on orthographic you can i like perspective it's, it's just easier for me um and then i'm just gonna rotate them both 45 degrees okay so i'm gonna hit rotate the one on the left would be minus 45 and then the one on the right select the one on the right will be uh you hit rotate and 45 um if you're not on front view, when you hit rotate on 45, it's going to rotate it in, depending on the angle you're looking at it. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, if I mean, you don't have to be in front in front view. You can just like hit rotate Y and then hit the 45. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, whatever is easier, whatever you like the most, just just go for it. Um, okay. So now we have those two. I'm going to use those two as lights. You can do. I mean, there's a lot of a lot we I could teach you about lighting. I, I found this is the easiest thing I can explain in a short video for beginners. Uh, and you can get, I mean, I don't know everything. I don't know if anyone knows everything. Um, but there's a lot, a lot that we can do about lighting. Um, before I forget, let's delete this uh, original lamp that comes from the default lamp. So select it with the right mouse button, click X, delete 
Bam. All right. Um, and then just just so I don't forget, I want to add um, a plane, right? Some sort of a floor of a surface where this vase is is suspended on. Um, so let's hit. Um, make sure it's in the center. The cursor's in the center. I just hit Shift A, Mesh Plane. I'm just gonna scale up by like 20, just so I don't have to worry about it too much. Okay. We we have really few things on screen, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and then. In order for you to see how you're starting to light the scene, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna divide this window, this screen. I'm just gonna grab this little arrow thing here, that little triangle, and just open it here. And then suddenly you have two windows, right? So in one of them, I just wanna I just wanna leave it like this, where I can just you know move around and select different things. The other one I want to see it I want to see it rendered. Um, so I'm gonna you know what? I think I'm gonna I'm gonna divide it the other way around just because you see it's here. It's it is easier. Um, so just hover here in the in the in between the two, the two. Right click and you can see you can sit, get join area, join it, and then you know decide which of them you want to keep so you can you move it to the side. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the triangle and just open it uh, horizontally instead of vertical. Because um, I mean just because of how we have made this it, it's a lot easier um so just zoom in into the vase on the bottom so you can see all of it okay um and then you can select right here on the on the viewport shading menu you can select that and then hit rendered and now you can see that's pretty much how it would be rendered of course you can't really see much because there's no light but that's what we're gonna fix, right? So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna turn this plane into a lamp. To do that, you have to add a material to it. Here you have the material menu. You hit a material, you hit new, name it, believe me. It's okay. You should also name the objects you're adding to the scene. Um, I get scolded for that all the time when I'm helping with a movie or with a game because it, it is actually a hassle for other people to look at your uh, work and not understand what's what and they waste some time that you could have helped them with so please please believe me name your things name your materials in i uh, for lighting for lamps i usually use the same names it's like a naming convention that i like to use it's only my thing i don't know if anyone else has anything else but i do lamp and then the main lamp i call it the sun okay it's not always a sun um, especially not with cycles back in the day you had a sun lamp I shouldn't say back in the day because a lot of people still use it, but just just believe me. This is how I name it. Name it will have whatever you want. Um, so we have the lamp sun, and then what we need to do, uh, let's open this preview thing just because it's new and it's great to see it now. Um, on the surface, the surface, you have all those different types of uh, shaders. I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, there are a lot of tutorials out there that go through all of them, and I encourage you to watch them. Ah, watch them all and learn as much as you can. On this one, I'm just going to show you how to add some light. So you're going to go into a mission. Look at that. Suddenly, you already have some light down here. Uh, but obviously, it's not enough. Um, this is This is usually something you have to like tweak a lot. I'm gonna start with 20. Um, you can see that's a lot of light. Um, I like it. E e usually, when you think it's too much, it's not exactly too much. Um, but you know, you have to render and see a couple times when you add all the materials and stuff. Actually, I do think it's a little too much. I'm gonna go for 15. Yeah, let's start with it. now. You can see, you know, you can see some shadows and things like that and then on the other side what i want to do um, oh sorry and then you should select a color to it um a little bit of tint i feel like if you add a little bit of orange well that's too much orange when i say a little it's a little but it really makes a difference it really really makes a difference um 15 strength uh if you move that too far you may need a little bit more if you i mean i'm not giving you an exact distance so maybe i should get better on that um here uh, on the other lamp, on the right lamp, we're gonna, um, let me show you how to do this, you know, the cool way. You can select the lamp sun that you had already, and you can rename this to lamp, and I call this blue. Um, and then what you're gonna do is that you're gonna divide that number in half. It's you, that's usually how I do it. I just get the main lamp and every other lamp with half the power or the strength I guess I should say and then I give it a little blue tone a little a little tint not not too much 
Um, because it, it does make a difference right away. You can see that blue. And I mean, those lamps, even a little bit of color really make a difference. So now you can see that you have a really strong shadow on the right side and just a little bit of shadow on the left, right? Because the light on the left, it's a lot stronger than the light from the right. That's it's that simple. Uh, but, you know, it's it makes it a little bit more believable than just having all the light coming from one side and there's nothing else on the scene so obviously there's no reflections or whatever but you i hope you start to understand how this works all right so and now you have you have a light scene um i think it looks i think it looks pretty cool you have a vase and you can see it so so far so good mission accomplished um now what we're got, what i want to show you is how to shade it how to make it glass how to make it pretty all right so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna select the vase right here um and then you can see that there's a default material assigned to things uh, because we started on the blender engine render it doesn't have nodes to it so you have to click on the use nodes uh let's give it a name let's say it's the vase and then we're gonna change from diffuse diffuse is usually just the color right right now this is white well grayish white but if you just switch that to yellow it would be just yellow if you switch it to blue it would be just blue that simple okay um so what i want to do is that i want to change change the material to a glass because that's what i promised you a glass base look at that we have glass it's that simple. And then I'm just going to add a color. I'm just going to add my favorite color. So my favorite color is orange. So I'm just going to select some orange here. Uh, look at that. I, th I think that looks pretty. Don't you think that looks pretty? I hope you're answering or at least nodding while you're listening to me. Um, but look at that. That's that's orange. Um, now that I look at it with the color, I think the light was, was pretty accurate. It's not, you know, too bright, not too dark. Um, but I actually feel it could have a little bit more light coming from the left. So I'm going to turn that into, I'm going to say 18. Um, yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it like that. You know, it's a really bright day out there. Um, I may just add a little bit more tint, a little, uh, a little bit more orange. Uh, see, now I went too far. Now I went too far and it doesn't work anymore. Um, anyways, you can play with it, uh, depending on what you want, depending on what your scene is, all that stuff. Um, but, hey, look at that. Now now we have a vase, and it has a material, it looks good, okay? Uh, um, just, you know, things that you start noticing when you add the color. I think the solidify could have been a little stronger. You can always select the vase back, go into the modifier, you know adjust the thickness a little bit maybe a point 20 i don't know whatever you want right just like tweak it change it whatever you want you make make an army of little vases i don't know send them to me name them i don't i don't care um so that's good now now i'm just gonna show you how to show off send it to your mom so she can print it and put it on the fridge all that stuff so you can go into your render tab right here and then this is the way I like to do it. Um, you you can render in the image editor and you would just show there. Uh, and that's that's not a problem. I like to see it in a new window. That's just that's just me. Um, <clears throat> uh, and then another a couple of things that I like to change. Um, if you go here into sampling, this that you're seeing samples. Sam I don't really know how to explain it. The point is, the higher the number, the crisper, the nicer looking, the, I don't know, you get the best quality out of it, okay? Is that a good explanation? Good enough? So, I usually get this render to something like a thousand uh, for something this simple. When I when I have a full scene, sometimes I go crazy and go to two thousand. I mean, it takes longer. The, the higher that sample number, the longer it's going to take. Uh, so... I'm just gonna go for a thousand because I can pause this and you know come back later and show you ta-da it's finished. Um, but that's that's one of the things that, uh, I do in order to shorten the the render time. I usually go here into light paths and go and take that max bounces 
to four. Uh, I read somewhere that past four it's just overkill. It doesn't really matter at that point. Uh, so it, it does make a difference. It does uh, render a lot faster. So I usually go for that. Uh, I mean, and that's only if, if if I'm in a hurry. If not, you can just keep, keep come here to the integrator presets and get uh, full global illumination. It will take forever, but it looks great. So go for it. Um, and then I guess everything else is fine. I don't I don't really you know we don't have anything in mind other than to show it. Um, but what you want to do is position the camera in a way that it looks good, right? So if you hit your numpad zero, see this little rectangle here? That's your camera. You can select it like any other object. And then hit G and move it. Or if you don't want to move it, you can rotate it the same way you rotate anything else. If you hit R, you can rotate. If you hit C, you rotate on the Z, Z axis, X, Y. So why don't uh, I think I'm just going to move it with G. I'm just going to put it there. Obviously, you can see that you have those corners there. You can select your plane. Uh, and just, you know, move it around a little bit so it's not showing anymore. Um, look at that. Perfect, right? And then the, if you zoom on the, on the on this other window, on the one you have rendered, and hit zero, you're going to get exactly the same. You can zoom in so you only see the rendered part. Yeah, looks pretty good, right? Once you have it set like that, once you have the camera where you want it, you can just either hit F12 or you can go here to this little render button, hit it, and there you go. You see how this new window. Um, obviously, I, I asked for a thousand samples uh, for the final render, so it's it's gonna take a little bit. Um, so I'm just gonna pause this and come back whenever it's finished. And we're back, and look at this. This is the final result. Um, you can see the difference in the quality. Uh, it looks really clean, really nice, really beautiful right here. Um, anyways, in order to save it, all you have to do is hit F3 on this window and, you know, give it a name, save it, whatever you want. I'm going to go for a desktop. I'm just going to name it, you know, Tutorial Final. And that's it. And uh, then you will have it forever. Send it to your mom. Send it to me, info at blendercontest.com. Uh, show it around uh, and I hope you have learned something if not at least had a blast for uh, the last half hour um, anyways uh, feel free to leave your comments let me know how I did um, anything I could improve and if you have any requests um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to make a tutorial for that too alright again this was Frank and S from BlenderContest.com have a good one